Hey guys, I don't usually show the mechanism of my twisty puzzles on my YouTube channel, and I think it might be interesting, so I'm going to start with this, the octahedron star maze. I guess before we start, the first step is to disassemble this complete puzzle. So let's start by taking the pieces out and see where we go from there. Okay, so I've disassembled about everything except the inner mechanism. Uh, now I'm gonna try to show you this without disassembling the whole thing, otherwise it's gonna take me a long time. Um, now, I don't know if you can see, but on the inside there's a Mega Minx. You see, these are the centers right there, uh, with the screws. Then you've got the edges between the centers, and you've got the corners, the big corners on the outside. So this turns just like a Mega Minx, like this, like that. Well, technically, it's almost a kilominx because you only see the corners on the outside and you barely see the inside. Now, let me try to explain. So, this is the equivalent of the Mega Minx. So, you've got these faces that turn, you've got five corners, five edges per face, and the center. And the same thing is happening here. So, on the inside, the part that you see right in the middle, that's the edge. And those big parts are the corners. Now, um, these corners are that big because, well, uh, this corner is actually extended out into the second layer of mechanism. The reason you see these big corners is that there's another layer of mechanism on top, and that's the pyraminx crystal layer. So let me show you what it looks like when you remove an edge piece from a pyraminx crystal. Uh, let's see, that one's, uh, that one's well tight and everything, so it's going to be kind of difficult to disassemble. Uh, let's see if I can do this differently. Uh, the thing is I readjusted the tension of that one for it to turn really well and it barely locks up at all and it turns very very well so the only problem is that it's hard to disassemble. Let's see if I can use a screwdriver to pull that part out of its slot. It's kind of difficult and I don't want to break anything and I think there's a chance that I will but then again I do want to show you guys how it works, so there we go, parts out. So as you can see, uh, the mechanism is sticking out here, so if I pull the whole piece out, uh, you can see on the inside that there's a slot. Now that's the same slot as you can see here. So this is actually a pyraminx crystal core. Um, and that's as simple as it is for the for the second layer of mechanism, the one that you see here. It's just a pyraminx crystal. And now I decided to go for megaminx, pyraminx crystal, and starminx uh, layers in the mechanism because I think it's just more stable. The pyraminx crystal is actually a very stable puzzle when you put well multiple layers of mechanism over it. So I figured it was probably a good idea to do it like that. So. Yeah, let's move on to the rest. Now, I've got a whole lot of parts that are completely disassembled. On this side, I've got those edges that go into the Pyraminx crystal part. They're Pyraminx crystal edges. And all the Starminx parts right there, which are going to go uh, over the centers. But that's later, because right now we only want to assemble the Pyraminx crystal part. So I'm going to lay them out. Uh, that way you can see more clearly what I'm working with. Alright, so... Okay, these are the, the Starmings parts over there. Uh, right now I'm only gonna work with the Pyraminx crystal parts. So let's start and lay this out so it's clear to see. Okay, so I've laid out the parts. As you can see, the, uh, there are the, these parts, which are the, um, well, the three centers uh, around the center. Well, it's not really centers, actually. There's The center of a face is just a dot. It's empty. There's just lines that cross. These are the parts that are at this intersection. So, I'm going to start by showing you what it's like when I assemble the white face, for example. So, I'm going to have this part here, this part there, and this part right there. As you can see, this is the intersection I was talking about. They all meet there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 
another star minx uh, edge but this time one of the big ones so I can uh, use it to see where the next face is going to be so if I assemble it here uh, I noticed that this isn't correct so it's it should go here that way it's on the same level as the whole face here um, so I know now that the red face is on this side so I'm gonna assemble the red face right there this puzzle is actually very simple to assemble um, let's let's carry on now I know there's the green face behind it because well this part is uh, the reference that we're gonna use to assemble the rest uh, so I've got this green part here I've got one here and I've got one there and then there's the blue face dark blue right there so I'm gonna assemble the three edges just like the other faces just like this Okay, uh, I'm going to try to zoom in a bit so you can see more clearly. Um, Alright, so now, now that I've got this, uh, I'm going to look for the, the white, red, large edge piece. So this is the one that I'm looking for, because I know it's going to go here between the white and the red color. And that's going to give me the two remaining faces on that side of the puzzle. Uh, the blue one, light blue, which is going to go here. And the one that's going to go here as well as the last one which is going to go right in there. Uh, you'll notice that here I've got the red, blue, green, well light green face. That corresponds to this part here that we're going to slide in that way. So it's green with green, red with red, blue with blue, and yellow with the yellow face that we just uh, need to assemble again on the same level as this one. So this is what we're going to do. So this is actually quite easy for now. Um, now I've got the blue yellow, light blue yellow uh, Starmings edge that goes here um, and the okay dark blue light green yellow which is this one so it goes here I'm gonna slide it in because sliding it in is always easier um, then I've got the orange face that I haven't assembled yet right here so that's gonna be quite easy Again, always sliding the parts in, so so that's not a problem. Uh, I've got this uh, large edge piece, that's the last one of the bunch, and it goes here between the blue face, orange face, white face, and the green face, which is the last one and the only one I have not yet assembled. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so as you can see for now, no efforts to assemble this whatsoever. Uh, okay, maybe the last part is going to be more challenging because you can't really slide it in that well because you, you can't just push it in through the hole because there are parts all around it. Uh, usually when you assemble the rest, there's always a gap that you can use somewhere. Okay, so now I've pushed it in and all those pyraminx crystal edges are in place. Now, just to show you, this is what it looks like when you've only got pyraminx crystal edges. This is what a pyraminx crystal octahedron would look like uh, if it was cut like this, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So, let's move on to the next part. Again, I'm gonna have to spread out the parts so I can see more clearly which piece I need to assemble where. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna zoom out again so you can see everything that I'm doing. Okay, so I've laid out all the parts these are Starminx centers, and these are all uh, Starminx wingtips, or I don't know how you want to call them. The equivalent of these tips here, these triangular tips. Uh, they're all the same, uh, they just have a different shape because this is a shape mod with parts that are not always the same shape. So, let me show you how I uh, take care of this step. So, first let's start with uh, this center, for example. This is the, the, the white-red center. Now I know there's a small red triangle and a small white one, so I'll take one of each here um, and I'll insert them right there. So again, almost no effort whatsoever to assemble this. Uh, then I've got one white large uh, triangular piece. Uh, that one I know it's going to go there. Um, let me see. Right there. Same for the red one. Right here. 
and I've got one last part here. Those are the two color edges that you can see here. Uh, edges, I meant, you know, triangular parts. Um, and that's how you assemble the five parts that you can see on the center of a star mix. These ones right there. Because now, f for now, all that I had was the pyramid crystal edges, which you can find on a star mix as well. Now I'm gonna do the red blue edge right there. Same method as before. Um, so blue here, red, blue red, blue, and red right there. So for now, as you might have noticed, the parts are quite loose. That's because the puzzle is only partially assembled, so you don't have parts pushing other parts into place yet. So for now it's normal, uh, that's uh, always how it's going to be. And uh, you always have to assemble it completely in order for it to be completely stable. Uh, now, for those wondering why I chose a Pyraminx crystal uh, layer in between the Megaminx and the Starminx, unlike the mass-produced puzzle where there's a, um, a Megaminx right here, uh, it's it's uh, basically uh, one layer skipped uh, in the sense that there's one less layer than this one. Well, I just wanted more stability on this one, so I decided to go with three layers of mechanism instead of the classic two. And uh, I've always chosen this option because I think it's more stable, and it's still very, very smooth. So it's not a problem, and I prefer stability and sacrifices, uh, sacrificing sorry, a little bit of smoothness for the well-being of this puzzle. Uh, and to be honest, I've never regretted that decision because it spins well and it is extremely stable. Uh, so that's great. Okay, so I'm carrying on. I've got the blue-green edge here, or triangular piece. Uh, this is the blue, light blue, well, last of the light blue star tips. Alright. Now I've got the green white edge and this is gonna be this is something I have to repeat uh, 12 times because there are 12 centers on a star minx and therefore 12 equivalent edge parts on the octahedron star minx. So uh, I'm gonna leave this video I'm gonna stop talking I'll just uh, keep talking at the end of the video I'll let you see the assembly now that I've explained everything. Okay, I'm at the last center, so I'm just going to show this final assembly, and um, and yeah, uh, by the way, it only took me about 20 minutes to disassemble the, the puzzle, explain the mechanism, then spread out the parts and reassemble it. Uh, so honestly, this is a very fast puzzle to assemble. I thought it was going to take longer, but it's, it's actually quite quick, so that's perfect. And here it is assembled, and as you can see, the parts are much tighter than they were before. Um, so yeah, now you can turn the puzzle and it is a fully functional octahedron star mix. So this is how it works. Now um, I'd love it if you could tell me in the comments section below um, if you actually enjoy these types of videos uh, because I think it's quite interesting and um, since you watch my videos you probably like custom puzzles and if you do you're probably interested in the mechanism so I'd love to know your thoughts on this puzzle uh, so that I'll know if I need to make some more videos like this one. So yeah, thanks for watching and as always all my social networks are in the links in the description below down here. Uh, feel free to click that, it really helps and uh, yeah, I'll see you in tomorrow's video and as promised last week, tomorrow's video is a new 3D printed puzzle so stay tuned and I'll see you tomorrow.